Hi everyone and welcome back! In this video, we'll be testing out four new materials to see how well they work for clay cracking. Clay cracking was a huge trend four years ago, and I'm starting to notice this showing up again on ASMR channels. I received a lot of great suggestions from you guys under the last video, so now it's definitely time to try them out. Some of these pieces were pretty challenging to create, and they gave very unexpected results. One of them ended up being downright dangerous, so keep on watching to see what happened. Let's start with a quick recap. What is clay cracking? This DIY emerged in 2019 from Asian social media channels, and it's purely for ASMR purposes. It works with clay in any shape, but the ball is usually most popular. To get started, you'll need a very soft air dry clay, and I'm using my favorite brand here, which is Hearty Soft by Pedico. As you can see, it's so amazingly fluffy and breaks apart like a cloud. This is not going to work with polymer clay or pottery clay because both of those are too hard to press apart. Paper clay starts to dry very quickly once exposed to air, so I highly recommend keeping unused clay inside a wet wipe or damp paper towel. Just wrap the pieces loosely and set them aside for later. The outer shell in clay cracking is usually made from nail polish or gypsum plaster. I have a tutorial here for plaster cracking, which has a different aesthetic, but it's just as satisfying. I tried finding other alternatives to make the shell, but I wasn't very successful, so that's why I'm excited to try it again in this video. Roll the clay into a ball and start applying several coats of nail polish. You can also add color to the clay using acrylic paint. I find that pouring the nail polish directly onto the clay saves you a bit of time, especially with fairly sheer polishes like this one. Another version is what I like to call piñata clay cracking, where a hollow shape is filled with glitter or sprinkles. Simply press the clay flat and hold it in the hollow of your hand like this. Add a filling of your choice and then close it up, taking care not to squash it too much. Now I left the balls to dry for 12 hours, and notice that they're still a bit too soft. The cracking noise comes from the clay splitting through the nail polish, but if the outer membrane is too weak, then this won't work very well. As you can see here, the nail polish looks squishy when I press on it, and I don't think it's ready yet. So I left it a bit longer, and after 36 hours, the polish is a lot harder, and it makes a clicky noise when I tap on it. At this point, you should have pretty good chances for a satisfying crack. All of these turned out pretty well, with the pinata one being the only fail. This was my fault because I accidentally used real sprinkles, which of course absorbed moisture from the clay and turned into mush. For pinata clay cracking, you have to use fake sprinkles, which is also what I did for my Nyan cat from this video. If you want to see how that one turned out, then just click the link right here. Now it's finally time to move on to our experiments. This first one was suggested by loads of viewers, and it's clear resin. This is a standard two-part resin that cures after 24 hours. I ended up making a little too much because it's quite tricky to mix up a tiny batch, so I'd recommend having another project on standby for your leftovers or using a ready-made UV resin instead. I'm going to use a clay heart as the base, and the easiest method to make this is to flatten it out slightly and then cut out a triangle shape. Then use your fingers to round the corners and pinch the bottom part together. I'm spreading the resin on top and simply going with one thick layer. It's important to move the pieces around after you're done, otherwise the pooled resin at the bottom will end up curing and sticking the clay to the mat. I had a bit of leftover clay and a lot of leftover resin, so I dipped a ball of it inside like this. This reminds me of glazing a cake pop, and the bonus is that you get a really thick layer without having to brush it on like nail polish. I'm going to leave all of this to cure for 24 hours. The next material we want to test out is wax. 
I have two types here and I want to see if there's any difference between paraffin and beeswax. This package of white paraffin wax is actually from the same candle making kit where I got the clear gel wax for my squishy making experiments. If you don't have any wax chips, then you can simply chop up a white tea light candle instead. Those are also all made from plain paraffin wax. The ideal method for melting these is inside a water bath on the stove, and I would really recommend that as well. I used a microwave because I was filming my office and I don't have a stove there, but as you'll see in a bit, the whole process was a lot harder than I expected. For the clay base, I'm mixing up some yellow clay to make little bumblebees. If you want to paint over a clay cracking design, then it's important to use watercolor and not acrylic paint. The reason is because dried acrylic paint forms a plastic-like membrane that can't be pressed apart, whereas watercolor contains loose pigments that move around easily with the clay. Now I'm melting the wax in the microwave, doing one minute increments on high. You have to check it very often to avoid burning, and this took a really long time. Here's the fully melted beeswax, and I'm just pouring it over the clay. I was unprepared for how quickly the wax hardens, and my bee nearly got stuck to the plate. So the best method is to definitely hold it in the air while you're pouring, or use a larger container for the wax and dip the entire clay piece inside. The white paraffin wax took even longer to melt, and I strongly recommend doing this on the stove. I've been noticing a lot of ASMR videos featuring wax lately, such as cracking it over slime or melamine foam. This seems to be a new trend going on, so it's good to know how to do it safely. The white wax hardens almost instantly, and I'm also going to put both of these into the freezer to make them even crispier. At this point, I'm checking on the resin pieces again, and notice that the leftover material has already cured. As you can see, I can easily turn the cup upside down. The big problem, however, is that the resin on the clay is still very sticky, and I'm feeling a bit uneasy about this. It's almost like the clay is absorbing the resin inside, and I know that things like moisture or dust can interfere with the curing process. I'm going to leave this for a bit longer, and I'm just hoping that the resin will somehow harden. Next up we have sugar, or more specifically, a hard sugar shell like the kind you find on candied fruits. I've never made something like this before, so I'm going to follow a recipe for tang hulu, which is something I had very often as a kid in China. The basic recipe is one cup of sugar followed by half a cup of water. I've watched enough YouTube videos to know that it's not easy to create a perfect candy shell, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I don't have a candy thermometer, so I'm going to use this method of testing the syrup in ice water. I have a bowl of ice here, and I'm going to dip a spoon into the syrup and then back into the water. On my first attempt, the syrup looks a bit sticky, and it also feels kind of squishy afterwards. I can stretch this out like caramel, and I just can't imagine it cracking. So I'm going to let the sugar boil for a bit more and then test it again. This time, the syrup still flowed a bit inside the ice water, but it forms a fairly sharp shape. I think that this one looks pretty decent, like it could produce a good crack. I actually don't have much time to decide, because the sugar is starting to caramelize, so I'm going to dip the entire clay into the syrup. Then I'm placing it into the ice bath, and this produces a really cool looking shell. The only thing I'm worried about is that the sugar shell might absorb moisture from the air and turn soft again. So I'm making the second piece as fast as I can, and then sticking both of these into the freezer before I crack it. Last but not least, we have soap. This one makes a lot of sense because there's so many ASMR channels that create amazing noises by crushing soap. I have two types of melt and pour soap here and I want to see if there's a difference between transparent and white. The recommended melting method is to use a water bath on the stove and since I'm filming this part at home, I can definitely do that now. First, I'm chopping these up into chunks and this part is pretty satisfying on its own. 
I decided to use a little bit more because I want to dip the clay into the melted soap instead of trying to pour it over. So now I'm placing the chopped up soap inside a water bath and these melted pretty quickly. The white soap looks a bit like coconut milk. For the clay base, I'm going to make two little bars of soap. These are really easy and I'm just creating a turquoise color with acrylic paint and then forming them into round rectangular shapes. I actually did this part before melting the soap and I kept the clay soft using some baby wipes. Now I'm just sticking a toothpick inside and dipping it into the liquid soap. Then I'm repeating it with the white soap and leaving both of these in the freezer to harden. So here are all the final pieces. To my relief, the resin did cure after 12 hours, although it still feels a little bit soft. This is my first cracking attempt and it actually worked. However, I'm going to leave the remaining pieces for longer and hope that the resin shell continues to cure. Here they are the next day and you can see that each one has a nice glossy surface. This looks and feels just like a thick layer of clear nail polish. But unlike nail polish, resin is a lot stickier and this was firmly attached to the toothpick. I had to rip it off creating a fairly large hole, but it didn't have a big impact on the cracking which was very satisfying. So in conclusion, resin is extremely similar to clear nail polish and the big advantage is that you only need to apply one layer. However, it's quite a bit more expensive and the question is whether you want to use up all your resin for a one-time DIY. Next up we've got the bumblebees inside wax. These just came from the freezer and they feel nice and solid. As a side note, if you want to harden the shell for clay cracking, then you can only leave them inside for an hour or two, otherwise the clay is going to freeze as well. I'm going to start with beeswax. This one was pretty good. Not as great as the resin, but there was definitely a crack. I think you can probably enhance the effect by using more layers of wax. The paraffin wax also worked quite well. I like the sound because it's a bit deeper and more muffled compared to the sharp crack of nail polish. I did notice that the outside pieces start falling off as you press the clay, so it's a bit harder to get secondary cracks. Now let's move on to the sugar shell. The texture is solid, but it leaves a very sticky residue on your fingers, which is hard to see on camera. The result is quite satisfying, probably because the sugar layer is much thicker than any of the other materials. However, one major downside is that the broken sugar crystals are very sharp, and I ended up cutting my finger on them. It wasn't even during the first crack, but one of the final ones when I was just pushing the clay around. So this method, although very satisfying, is not something I'd recommend trying. The sugar fragments are literally like tiny shards of broken glass, and it's pretty risky pressing around on that with bare skin. Last but not least, we have soap. I had high hopes for this one, but it turned out to be very unspectacular. This was the only one out of all four that didn't make any noise. The reason, of course, is because the clay is moist and soap dissolves upon contact with water. So even though these pieces were coated in a nice layer of soap, 
most of that got absorbed into the clay before it had time to harden. The secret to those satisfying soap crushing videos is that they let the soap dry out until it's completely brittle. That's what produces the great ASMR noises, however this just isn't possible for clay cracking. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I've linked all the related tutorials down below. I've done clay cracking with different shapes, designs, plaster, foam, and even gold leaf, so be sure to check those out if you're interested. I'm Joanna, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!